Hello YouTubers. In this video, we're going to be covering replacing the upper and lower strut bushings on my 2008 BMW X5. So what is the problem and what am I trying to resolve here? So riding down the road, I get a clunking noise on the past driver's side that just clunk, 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 clunk. It's like something metal on metal is beating each other to death under the car, just riding over surfaces. It's gradually gotten, gotten worse um, to the point now where it's, I don't know, I feel like I need to replace it. So all indications are is the strut bushings. So one thing about strut bushings, most of these videos people are covering, they are replacing a bushing on the top here. They're gonna do a bolt, put in a new bushing and a new washer and tighten the bolt back down. But in reality, there's another bushing underneath the car sandwiched in between the top and the bottom. So I'm going to be pulling out the entire suspension, right, passenger side and driver side, replacing it all. This is a big deal for me. I am just a home mechanic. This is not a day job for me, but this is something where I hate spending money. I've mentioned this on other videos, and if I could save myself some pennies, I will, because this is not rocket science. It's just a job with nuts and bolts. Speaking of nuts and bolts, the size of this job is a big deal for me, but in reality, there's only four bolts and three nuts down here that you got to deal with, and four nuts up there that you have to deal with. That sounds easy, sounds like a no-brainer. I can do four bolts and three nuts and four nuts up top, however, the ones down here are a pickle, and you will fight yourself quite a bit on this. So prepare yourself for this. This is going to be a big job. I would give yourself a day. Do not try to rush it. Give yourself a day to do the job. I gave myself two days. The first day I took the car apart, got it up in the air, got everything ready, and started WD fording and PB blasting everything I was going to touch. The reason for that is I didn't want to break bolts, break nuts, don't want to have a problem. And I, to the degree that I can prepare myself for success and this project for success, I did by pre-lubing everything. Now, the parts I used on this are, are for this car. This car has a magnetic suspension and has active and dynamic everything else you can imagine, all sorts of gizmos under here that are eventually gonna be a problem and a nightmare for me, but they're the parts I gotta replace. So the description below, in the description below, are the parts I use for this car, which is unique to this car. So if you're just looking up X5 parts or bushings, they are not the same for this car, and I cover that in the video. I will show you the differences. Also, what we're getting ready to do now is go on a test drive and I'm going to play back for you some sounds of the clunking noise that is just a nightmare. So let's jump into the video. Before we take the car apart, let me play for you the soundtrack of the clunking noise that you should hear in your car. So let's take a listen. So what a horrible sound to have to listen to while riding around in your car. So if your car sounds like this, again, this is the project for you. So let's get tools. goals. These are the tools I bought. Bought. These are the tools I needed. I needed a drive handle and a socket, 13 millimeter, and that's to get the plastics off from around the car. You'll see that in the video. You also may need a 10 millimeter to assist you with that, but that's what you need. Then I have an 18 millimeter. The 18 millimeter is going to be used for the fork looking thing that this uh, strut sits in. Strut sits inside of a sleeve on this fork looking thing. This is going to be used to get that out. You have a 19 millimeter. That I don't remember what I use that for. It'll show up in the video. Three quarter inch rat, uh, um, wrench along with a three quarter inch ratchet. That is used for this, the spring compressor. That's where that gets used. 13 sixteenths along with the 21 millimeter. 
These are used for the very bottom ball joint area that you'll see in the video. Then I have a 3 8 inch ratchet, some extensions, and a 40 millimeter torque bits. This is going to be used to get the uh, strut loose, the top bolt that holds the whole thing together. You're going to need that to hold in place while you use the 18 millimeter wrench to loosen the top bolt off. So this is going to hold the strut in place while you use this to loosen the bolt. Then we have a 16 millimeter 3 8 and we have a 16 millimeter half inch and that's going to be used at the very top part up here if the upper control arm is held onto that. So you'll need two 16 millimeters. I didn't have a wrench in either of these so I used sockets and it worked just fine. 18 millimeter again for the purposes of some of these other things I also used a ratchet. 21 millimeter that is for the very bottom area for the bottom ball joint like I mentioned. Half inch ratchet some half inch extensions and then a half inch breaker bar. These are what I believe to be all you need for this project. I could, could sprinkle in a Phillips head screwdriver, like I said, a 10 millimeter, but this is the 99 percentile that I recall using for this project. In the video, I cover everything. So please watch the entirety of the video before taking on your job. Anyway, YouTubers, Let's uh, get this car up in the air, get the hood off, hood off, get the hood up and start taking things apart. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to undo, unloosen and pull out all these plastics. So 13 millimeter here, pull these out, pull the panel up. You probably want to go ahead and pull out the gasket all the way around and then I believe it's 10 millimeters that's going to undo these panels here all the way around. Some people don't do this part for me. I want easy access. I'll spend the extra five minutes taking this thing apart so that I have an easier job down the road. So all the plastics have come off and that has revealed the um, strut bolts. So what I'm going to do now is on the top sides, I'm just going to put some PB blaster on it for, for now. In fact, I'm going to take a picture while I have you guys here to notice where the bolts for the struts are sitting. Okay. Same thing on this side. PB blaster is going to be necessary for sure. I would bet these have probably never been out. Anyway, let's uh, get some PV blaster on the top and then we're gonna start next by taking off the wheels on both sides, jack the car up, jack the car first, put it on stands, take the wheels off and start PV blasting everything else. My goal again for today is to get it in preparation for tomorrow. I am not in a rush. I'm not trying to strip bolts, break bolts, break nuts, whatever. This thing is just going to be, I'm going to keep PB blasting it throughout the night, throughout the day and night, rest of the day and night, probably a dozen times I'm going to be out here with PB blast or WD-40, whatever, to do all the bolts, everything I've got to get done. So let's, uh, start wetting things up top and then we'll take the car and jack it up. So I've got the car sitting on the center jack point underneath for those that don't know. It's right here right underneath this opening for the plastic. That is a metal bar, structural, and a jack point. Now that we got some load off the wheels, let's loosen the lug nuts on both sides. They're up in the air, jack stands are in place, getting ready to lower the vehicle down. Vehicles on the jack stands, let's uh, get the lug nuts off. Okay, the wheels are off. 
Everything looking good from that perspective. Everything's nice and level. So next steps, I'm gonna be oiling, WD-40, PB blasting these, these. This guy here. Gonna be PB blasting this side. There yet. That side there. So all I'm gonna do for the rest of the day, multiple times, probably at least a dozen times, I would imagine, is I'm going to be oiling, PB blasting all of this so that tomorrow when I start this project, it's easier than having to fight and possibly breaking bolts. This could be the first video I've seen or that you will see with active suspension and electronic dampers. I think, I, I don't know, active suspension, I don't know if that's standard on sport package or not, but anyway, we're going to be BB blasting all that we can to make our life easier tomorrow. Our YouTubers are in preparation, just like I'm preparing the car with PB Blaster. Sorry, PB Blaster, I'm preparing the struts and everything down here. I'm also preparing my spring clamps. So these can bind, you know, cause a little extra friction when you go to tighten these things up on the springs to bring it in. I'm looking for as little resistance as I can because there's already going to be resistance on the spring. So I like to put a little engine lube on this is really thick. I don't have any grease. Grease probably would work better, but I don't have grease. Anyway, engine lube, just a little dab will do you across the threads, tighten it up and down. That way that will be ready for tomorrow as well. So see you in the morning or sometime tomorrow. So YouTubers, I was concerned that this may be rust, <clears throat> but in retrospect, I'm wondering if what I'm looking at here is the remnants of the bushing that's flaked off, falling apart, and this is just what I'm seeing here, and it's actually not rust. Because I don't see any rust up here. And these two here, this one here, and this one here are downstream, if you will, of it. I don't know. I could be grasping at straws. Yeah, that one's rust, that one's rust, this one's not or appears to look like rust. Again, I think what I'm looking at here is just hopefully the contents of the bushing that's flaked off. Anyway, let's start the job. So the first thing I wanna do, because these are look rusty, but may not be rusty. Again, it could be because of the debris from the current bushing falling apart and the pieces so this could be rust or it could be bushing junk anyway let's undo this first make sure this comes off because if this doesn't come off and come off cleanly there's no need to do the rest of the job okay to do this part it's going to take an 18 millimeter and the t40 in here and i've got it wedged up behind here so that hopefully this comes off without issue. Anyway, you can't do it one-handed. Okay, it uh, broke loose sufficiently that I feel comfortable that this is not gonna be a problem when I go to take it off when it's on the vise. I uh, put an extension on it, placed it against this so that it would wedge here. That held this in place while I undid the nut. Well, began loosening the nut. So, nuts somewhat loosened. Now we're gonna start with the bottom parts. Here is to support this setup. And that's gonna allow me to, I'm gonna start with this bolt here uh, for the sway bar end link. Hopefully that will just slide right out now that I've got no pressure on it with the jack holding it up. And then I will move probably to taking that bolt there off. But first, let's get this one off, move it back out of the way. For this part here, we're going to use a 19 millimeter wrench. 
and a T40 Torx to hold that in place while we unscrew it. Okay, I've taken a screwdriver and just unpried this. It's going to give me looseness here. And the sway barring link was able to fall back, no problem. So, yeah. Next. I think, I think I'm going to drop that next. So let's get this bolt out. So this is a 16 millimeter. We're going to need another 16 on this side. We'll hold it in place. And that should give us the ability to begin to break this loose. All right, I'm about to interrupt the video so that I can insert into here a huge lesson learned on this part that we're trying to get undone. So that's why you're seeing this video change and my demeanor change. This thing here was a nightmare <clears throat> on the passenger side. Yours could be either side, but it was a nightmare. Tell you what did the trick on it was getting the bolt out, right? So I was able to get that out. Don't mar the bolt. Unloosen this thing here. Make sure it's free on this side to spin as well. And then hammer the head of the nut, not the screw. That would do that. And then if you have to have any kind of pressure to get that off, keep pressure on the car. Keep the car jacked up almost as though it wants to come off the jack stands. Okay. <clears throat> bolt and nut are out so what I'm going to do now is just I'm going to slowly drop the jack a little bit relieving some of the pressure and once I get some of the pressure off of this where this is dropped just a little bit I'm going to tap on this and it should want to break loose from this that's the plan at least because the way this thing works is the bolt goes through here and this upper arm sits in a pocket that this covers. So when this is in place, it holds this in place. Just think of it like if there was a sleeve in there to allow for this bolt to go through. Now that the bolt is through, this piece here will want to pop, can pop up. Hopefully it will pop up. But anyway, we're gonna pull some pressure off of this thing, drop it, tap it a little bit, and hopefully this thing here will break free. By the way, don't hit this. This is aluminum. I wouldn't recommend hitting it. If you have to tap it, don't hit. Okay, so the bolt is out and now I've got it strapped up to the control arm like it was. Basically it was connected here to here. The bolt came out. I will say it's a lot of corrosion. I'm gonna clean it off with a wire wheel or a wire brush. Go from there. So disconnect these guys all right so let's loosen this bolt get this bolt here out and then we'll get the bottom one out okay that bolt is out and we're going to move down to the next one we've got a wrench sitting on it an 11 16th wrench because i don't have a 21 millimeter wrench but it takes a 21 millimeter socket so let's get to it okay again i got it held here because i didn't want the hole knuckle assembly and everything to drop with it but it's not on the jack but i needed that free space so i could drop drop the strut from the bracket so the bracket is here when we're ready and we're done with this we'll put it back in the seat and jack it back up but for now that's out bolt is out everything's unhooked Brake sensor is unhooked. Everything now is at the top. On the car, we're going to take the strut assembly out and then we will mess with that end device. Okay, so the strut's out of the car. I've got it in my spring clamps, just hand tight right now, hand tight down there, and the point here is just to kind of hold it in place. It's free to move across the vise that way when I start to clamp or start putting pressure on this one it'll move 
it's in the vise grip because as I'm tightening this, I don't want this thing to slide just like you saw. So as I start to put pressure on this, this thing's going to want to walk down. And I want to keep it where it is. And while, I, while it's in this, I'll tighten it down, undo it, switch sides, put the vise on the other side, tighten it down, and I'll just keep toggling back and forth. So uh, it takes a three quarter inch wrench. Oops. Anyway, can't do it one-handed. Let me get this thing started. And we'll pick back up. But basically, I'm tightening a bolt until this thing is loose or until this thing here is loose <clears throat> so that I can undo it. Also, one thing to note. So I, I marked this side here where, where it is. And the reason for that is this thing's on a pitch. I want to find the same pitch. So I'm hoping that these marks will pay value, pay dividends to me later down the road. So I'll just line this, this, and this. And hopefully with this, and it will pop back right back in exactly where it needs to go once I'm done. So all I'm doing now is holding this in place, taking my 18 millimeter, and unloosening it. So for this part here, I'm just gonna back it back out till it gets close to the end and then continue tightening up here. Okay, so it's <clears throat> fairly loose, but loose now doesn't mean I'll be able to get it on later. This thing really needs to be clamped down pretty good, as you can see. I wish I would have grabbed another rung down, but worst case scenario, I will do it, clamp it back down and do it again. But I think I think it'll come out just fine. Anyway, let's give it a shot. Well, right now it's nothing to lose. It's already loose. So here it is in all its glory. I don't know if that's original equipment stuff or not. But next thing to do is to hammer this thing. Or maybe not even have to hammer it. I'm gonna get this top cap off anyway it is just sitting in this rubber isolator I just need to pull it off without causing any problems okay here it is and there is the bottom one Ugh. And that rubber isolator or uh, bounce stop. Anyway, again, here are the new parts. Let's see what we got. Again, this car has adaptive suspension. I would imagine the part number, well, the part number is different for the adaptive suspension. I would imagine that the grommet hole here, or the hole here, is bigger to accommodate that. Um, same thing with the boot cover and bump stop. No, actually, the boot stop and bump stop were the, no, nope, they were a different part number because the bump stop is a different size. Anyway, all this again is, like I said at the beginning, it's going to be down in the description below. Okay, YouTubers, I apologize for this, but in the excitement of getting the strut all apart, I quickly put it back together and forgot to film any of how this thing went back together. So, the way you assemble the strut is, I took off, I collapsed the spring, number six here, with the spring compressor. And I took off the bolt, number 14 at the top, took off the washer, and what you saw there was a remnants of number 12, right? So now the strut is apart, the spring is compressed, and I pulled off number 10, which you saw me grabbing and manhandling there. 
And that is what you've got to remove so that you can get to number eight, which is the other, the lower strut bushing. And I pulled off number five and replaced it with a new bellow. And I pulled out number four, a new bump stop. And I put it back in in the reverse order. So if number four went on first, then number five, and then one of the strut bushings, then I put back on number 10. And the rest is history. So I failed you there. I apologize for that. I just was ready to get it back together and there you go. So that's the order in which you put things back together. So all I'm gonna do is just clean this thing up a little bit. Clean that area up a little bit up in there as best I can, just to, while it's apart. Put this thing back together and unloosen the bolts. Okay, so I had a devil of a time freeing the control arm from this knuckle. And so in preparation for putting it back together, I've taken some sandpaper, wrapped it around a screwdriver, and just cleaned up the scale and debris that was up in there. Put some grease on this end, and I'm hoping that when I jack this thing back up, this thing will just seat back in. And if you recall, I told you this thing's got a channel, a U-shaped channel. That's where the bolt goes through and holds this thing in place. So let's uh, put some grease on this end so that when this goes back in that fork looking thing down there, it slides in as well. So this side is done, put back together. Everything nice and neat. I will say this here was a bear to get back in, but I ended up putting a C-clamp on it and can't even tell I was there. It just needed a little persuasion to go into this and seat itself into here just fine. But that's what it took. I also, just so you know, as you're manhandling all this stuff, I brake cleaned the discs again, just so that everything's non greasy Yeah. So everything's now in reverse on the other side. Just going to do it again. So I thought the other side was bad, but this side's worse. Not even a remnant of a bushing on this side. Okay, so this side here is done. All back up, put back up, nice and neat. So, job done. This side was much easier. However, it still took me three hours to do this side, and it was so much easier. Was, this one here came right out. Again, lessons learned on that. So, hopefully you saw that part. Anyway, I'm gonna put the car back together and we'll recap. Right, so I thought I'd take a moment and give you lessons learned here because I just completed the job. I haven't taken it off the jack stands, but I'm gonna put this up front because things you need to know. I would, just like I did, come out and oil everything down 24 hours in advance. To me, this, I thought it was gonna be rust, and it probably is some rust, but it's probably debris from the previous uh, bushing. But still, it was very hard to get off. It did not want to come off and free itself very easily, even after oiling it for 24 hours. <clears throat> Same thing on this side. The other thing I would do is get stuff out of your way so that you can work easily. The other thing that I think made it easier for me was not unloosening the top bolts of, up above the car and then loosening this guy here and the bottom bolt here and then hammering this down, leaving this in place so that this could fall. Now, hammering, when I say hammer, I'm not hammering with any kind of brute force. I'm just tapping this bracket, this bracket down so that it will fall. And it will fall. As long as the suspension is collapsed like it is, you may have to pull down on it some more. After this is out, it'll come down even more. That's the only way you're gonna get that out. So, <clears throat> that's it. So everything's back together. The car is back on its feet. 
parts are back in. I've given it a test drive and everything is working as expected. Uh, car does not pull to one side. The car does not um, give any indications of a problem. The bump stops are, bump stops, the bushings are solid. Everything is working just as expected. So the issue indeed was the bushings that were under here. So I don't know that you have to replace the bellows, the sleeve that covers the strut with new ones. Uh, the bump stops, there were some there as you saw when I took it apart, but by and large, um, probably could get away with not buying that piece, but it's 70 bucks for the bump stop and the new bellows for both sides. Uh, to me, if you're going this far and this invasive into this thing, and you're taking it all apart like that, put what you can on it while you got it apart. It's the same thing if you have a car that you got a timing belt, why would you not have them do the water pump at the same time? They've got to take it out anyway. Anyway, YouTubers, the job is complete, job is done. I'm satisfied with the work. Um, so if you like the video, like the video.